you know, we all kind of low-key this morning, and uh, that's all right, but everything's going to be all right. Yes, I'm just continuing to pray as we stand here for Sister Gladys, and um, just can't get out of the back of my mind, you know, what happened and what could have been. What could have been. Amen. Yeah. What could have been, Brother Yeah. And uh, some of you may not understand, this is a little rough for me this morning. One of my closest friends left me last night. My little blind, diabetic Puppy named Queenie. She died right in the spot where she was born. And I know some of you are not pet lovers, but you know, I know there's some folks out there that are, so you understand the roughness. So before I got here this morning, I had to take her little frail body over to the pet cemetery. And my children have their instructions as to when I go, what they are to do with the ashes of Queenie's mother and with Queenie. And I think I mentioned one time in a sermon that if I'm laid out in this church and y'all see these little boxes, y'all say, mm hmm, that's them dogs he talked about. <laughs> and as I was talking with the a uh, person at the cemetery this morning, I wanted to make sure that that was legal. He says, oh yeah, once they're cremated, that's a done deal. So my children know and my sister knows. And I don't think it's gonna be like a certain person here that's got a blanket that when she goes, I said, we ain't doing no funeral until that blanket is, I see that blanket. And if I don't see that blanket, I'm gonna say, all right, somebody better go home quick, bring that blanket from wherever it is, because." I'm not going to have her w come wake me up in the middle of the night saying, Reverend, why didn't you make sure them children put that blanket on me? My God. Now, I'm not calling no names, but can I get an amen, Sister Peeney? <laughs> and, and I've told her, unless I see that blanket, we're not starting no eulogy. But as I think about the topic of uh, the sermon this morning, when your faith is tested. And when I heard all the hollows about Sister Gladys fell out in the street, well, you know, the first thing when you think street and fall, the first thing came to my mind is, did something strike her? <laughs> and then I heard that half the church, all your congregation is standing out there. But you know, as I was walking back in, God began to speak to me again over the message that he had given me uh, earlier in the week, is that there are things that do test our faith each and every day. There are challenges that we face that try our faith sometimes almost to the limit. How many of you have gotten so close to the place where you wanted to throw in the towel? Yes, sir. But yet at the last moment, sometimes in the 13th hour, God steps in. Not one of us as believers are exempt from having faith-challenging moments. It is a part of our growth in Christ. There are things that will stretch you to the limit. There are things that will cause you to be pulled to almost unbearable moments. But yet right at that point where you're ready to give up, there always seems to be something that causes a breakthrough. My God. Now, I, I think I mentioned once before in an analogy that one thing I learned about, uh, about uh, 
concrete and, and metal is that when they're, when they're preparing a bridge, the metal in the bridge is always tested first. And the reason is they need to know where the breaking point of that metal is to determine the quality and the weight limit that any specific bridge can stand. Now, I don't know if you notice things like I do. Now, it used to be quite a bit on, on some of these uh, uh, two-lane highways that that we used to travel as the order of the day and maybe on the interstates you don't notice it as much. But all of those bridges always had a load limit. Yes, yeah. sir. It said just how much that bridge could stand at any given moment. Why? Because the metal was tested. Now, the other thing that, that you'll find out is that cement is also tested. Tested to see how much pressure it can take before it begins to crack and crumble. So like when you're building bridges and, 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 and buildings, you need to know just how much everything can stand, how much weight can be stacked floor upon floor upon floor based on the, the upright structures and everything put in place. And there are some people that are called engineers, not railroad, but architectural engineers that can look at those things and determine how strong a, a structure is. Now, one of the things that I heard, and I'm not sure on the accuracy of it, but I remembered watching uh, a program, a documentary actually, on um, the Twin Towers and how after the building fell, they saw some structural flaws that made it possible for the building to be compromised under conditions that were not thought of or seen before. There were several things that went into that. Nobody expected airplanes to go into buildings. That was just not thought of when that was designed. Then the, the amount of heat and the amount of, of, of flames that caused the metal to be compromised, that caused the building to start to fall from top down to the bottom. Each successful flo successive floor was not capable of maintaining the weight of what was coming down before. Nobody had thought about putting those things into the, 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 the concept of building those buildings. Now, because of that, when buildings are built, they have an element of terrorism that they include into most buildings that are being built so they can withstand more than what those buildings stood. My God. And that's just a fact of life and a fact of our time. And speaking on that, when we think about some of the things that happened just recently, the horrendous demonic things going on around the world and the things that happened in France the other day. We are living in times that stress us and pull us to our almost breaking point. But the good news is, even with all of that, and people say, yeah, we're living in the last days. And I, I saw where somebody says that Jesus is coming very soon. Well, he's been coming very soon for a long time. And we all should have been getting ourselves ready. Because the scripture tells us we don't know the day nor the hour. But one thing that should be happening is our strength should be increased as each stressful moment as each trying moment presses down on us and bends us and burns us and melts us to the point. No, if you think back over the experience of your life, God never puts any more on you than you can bear. And the word bears me out that he will provide a way of escape. My Lord. My Lord. The scripture tells us that so many of these things are coming. 
But the hope of true believers is that the Lord in his word says that before the end comes, the Lord will intervene and say, enough's enough. What is that but stopping just short of the point where the world breaks in two? How does Jesus help us through these faith challenging moments? What will you do in that moment of challenge? Now, I dare say every one of us in this room, every one of us who names the name of Christ has had moments that cause us to almost give up. Amen. Moments when you can't even pray for yourself. Amen. Have you ever had moments when you're almost too weak to say even, oh, Jesus? Yes, sir. Those are those moments. Those are those times that I'm talking about. There are things that like that, though, that cause us to grow. If we are in Christ and we don't focus and dwell on the situation, but look beyond it and take the attitude, I'm going through this because something in this is going to make me stronger in my faith. The word tells us that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called to his purpose. There's a song that has the words in it. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And every experience in life gives an opportunity for us to grow. And if we think about it in terms of learning everything that we experience, there is something to be learned from that experience. Every experience has its teachable moment. Even this morning, I thought about the thing that drove home to me, you don't know what a day will bring. You don't know what the next moment will bring. When we get up in the morning, we don't know whether we're going to make it back home and make it to our bed or whether during the night we're going to be gone in our sleep or whether we're going to wake up and somebody's standing over us with a gun or whatever. We don't know if a bomb's going to hit us in the middle of the night, but we trust God that he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Yes, I said it and I didn't stutter. My God. We don't know. So every moment of life gives us an opportunity to realize that those moments are not our own. Those moments belong to God. Those are moments that he uses to energize us and strengthen us and encourage us to draw closer to him. An opportunity for growth. And every time we grow, every time you learn something, I want to give you a caution. Here's my disclaimer for the morning. Every new level, there's always going to be a new devil. My God. Thank you, Pastor. What do you mean by that, Reverend Jackson? Well, when you were a child, your world was simple. The things that stressed you out are not the things that stress you out now. Those things that you thought were death-defying moments are child's play now. The challenging moments for a baby who can't feed himself, the screams and hollers are, is somebody going to feed me my bottle? Is somebody going to change my wet diaper? 
And as that child grows, the stresses become more and more. When the child learns how to feed themselves, those things are not stressful. When the child is potty trained, that's something that's not stressful. But then comes new responsibility. You know what to do and where to go. You best be doing it in the right place and at the right time. You know how to fix yourself something to eat. If you're hungry and you starve, that's your problem. Because now you know how to do it and you're not depending on somebody else to do it for you. Now, if you, if you don't do it the right way, then there, this is where the devil part comes in. Then there's going to be a consequence. Oh, we got quiet on that part. <laughs> when you get elevated on a job, and they give you the job description. That job description is probably more than the job description you had before. If you had the job previously of just putting stamps on paper, then you got elevated to the supervisor position, then your job was then to look at each stamp that each employee put on the paper and make sure that they were stamped in the right place and in the right way. It wasn't turned the right way. And it was your responsibility to catch if something was stamped wrong. That's a new level. Then comes a new responsibility or a new devil. Now, how do we relate that to our walk with Christ? Well, when you first came to Sunday school and you learned Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Nobody expected anything more of you than those elementary things that you sang about with those little songs. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. All right. But then as you learned and you began to realize that the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. Then it became a part of you that you know. I said, now you know what Jesus expects. Now you know that if you're not in Christ Jesus, then the, al the, the alternative is to spend a life in eternal separation from the fellowship of God, not just here, but on the other side. I go. As you begin to learn more about walking by faith and not by sight, then you begin to realize that there are more things that you have to trust God in than the things that you once did singing those little rhymes in Sunday school. And the scripture tells us in Luke chapter 12, verse 48, but he that knew not and did commit such things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. When you don't know something, somebody is more forgiving until they tell you how to do it. Then it goes on and says, for unto whomsoever much is given of him shall much be required. The more you know, the more you're accountable to what you know. And then it goes on to say, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much, of him they shall ask the more. My God. New level, new challenges, and new devil. Once you know something, you are accountable for what you know. I heard, I heard a pastor talking today about how when a church grows, there are new demonic situations that will come against the church. But you have to know and understand the basic tenets of what you need. Oh, this is going to be a quiet one today. <laughs> but I'm going to save what God has given me. The more you know, the more you are accountable for what you know, and the more when it comes to a relationship with Christ, you are told to keep your focus on the things that Christ has told the church to do and told believers to do. 
Now, when we were in sin, nothing was expected of us because our nature was sinful and we were doing what we knew. But the more we knew, then what happened, the Holy Spirit stepped in and started to hold us accountable for those things in our life. Now, if we turn a deaf ear and say, I hear you, God, but I just ain't going to do it. I hear you, but I ain't feeling it. I'm going to do like the like Frank Sinatra says, I'm going to do it my way and I'm going to be Burger King Christian. Well, you're not going to have it your way, because if you do, then you pay the price. There is something that you will lose in your life. There is something that that will will uh, will not be able to bless you because you're not trusting God to stretch you to the limit. Because if a child only remained comfortable in somebody carrying that child, there'd be a whole lot of grown folk and old folks that still wouldn't walk and be waiting for somebody to carry them from one place to another. But there was something that was burning inside of you that caused you when somebody carried you after a while, you wanted to try your legs out for yourself because you'd seen somebody else walking. And the more you walked, the better you got at it. My God. Well, that's the way it is with our relationship with the Lord. We should see other folks walking by faith that cause us to want to try out our faith legs. Yes, sir. Now, let me look at the text a little bit so we can call it a day. If we look at this text, we see several things in this text as I look at it. First of all, we can see the responsibility of a parent to a child. Now, I dare say nobody gives you a book on parenting. There's no course that can really teach you. Oh, yeah, I know we require some folks to go through parenting skills. But there's no textbook that says, OK, now that you are a parent, here is the how to book on being a parent. Because every child and every parenting situation is different. Now, you have the examples of how you were raised. You have the examples of how your parents trained you or your grandparents or, or your great aunt or auntie or whoever that raised you. But there's still no manual to tell you in this situation, this is what you do because every child is different. Now, I see that this father understood he had a responsibility to his child. And the more I read this text where it says that this was a demonic force that got into this child and would sometimes cause this child to be thrown into the fire. And I began to think as I was reading over this and, and I read over it again this morning as I was sitting in the study and I kept thinking, you know, you know what it kind of sounds like? It kind of sounds like a child that had seizures. Now, if you read that text again, look at some of those characteristics. And if you've ever seen anybody have a seizure, or if you've ever worked in a situation where somebody has a, a seizure, they lose control and it just kind of throws them and they, they sometimes hiss, they rock, they lay out in the floor, eyes roll back in their head until that thing lets them go and they go limp and then they come out of it just like nothing happened. I said, this could have been a situation where this child was having seizures since the day that child was born. Now, you see this father accepting the responsibility. How do we know that? Because he was able to give the history of how long it had been and he had, was there in support of his child. He wanted help. He wanted relief from his child, for his child. And so when Jesus, when he brought the child to Jesus' disciples, they had not grown to the place of their walk with him and their lear learning from him of how to deal with it. And so then he brought the child to Jesus and he said, I carried this child to your, to, your, to your students or your disciples, if you will, and they couldn't deal with it. And Jesus asked, and this was my clue, that this was probably some kind of seizure or something. He said, well, how long has it been? It's been ever since he's been an infant. I said, aha. 
Here's a situation, but in the, the King James version of English, they call it a demonic, demoniac situation. Probably was a seizure. And he told Jesus all that this would, would happen to this child. And so now Jesus says all things are possible if you believe. Now, first of all, let me point out something. The man had enough belief to bring the child to who? To Jesus. So don't kick the man to the curb because he didn't know where to bring the child. He knew that Jesus could do something. But now the man had been so weary of this situation. It had beat him down and beat him down. I can imagine him hearing the child moan and groan in the middle of the night and getting up and going to hold the child so the child wouldn't roll into the fire or put something in the child's mouth to keep the child from biting his tongue off or holding the child's arms to keep him from flailing and, and hitting maybe siblings in the house. And I can see this parent saying, Lord, how long am I going to have to put up with this? Is there any relief possible? Now, mind you, in those days, there's no kind of medication known to man to take a pill and stop the problem or get the problem under control. But this man was so weary and probably concerned about this child's future. Is this child going to make it to my age? What will happen? So he brought the child to Jesus. Thank God he knew where to bring the child. But sometimes the situations in life can cause your faith to become almost unraveled at the seam. And I believe Jesus recognized that and said, hey, get a grip. That's basically what he was telling him when he said, all things are possible if you don't just believe. Get a grip. You've brought him to me. Now trust me to do what I can. And his response was, I do believe. I can imagine him saying, I brought him to you because I do believe. Now help the weariness of my situation. Help me because I'm at my breaking point. Please do more than just look at him. I know that you can do something. Will you please help my child? Because in helping my child, you will be helping me. Because I'm so weak, I'm so worn, I'm so weary. And then we have the text about how Jesus spoke to that spirit. My Lord. He didn't jump on the child. He spoke to the situation. A lot of times, even the sanctified, holy saints of God. <laughs> Hello. We sometimes see situations and we attack the person My God. rather than trying to bring solution to the situation. Church folks are famous for doing this. Yeah, I'm talking about church folk. We're famous for doing this. And then on Sunday morning, stand up and sing, I'm bound for the promised land. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And then walk out the door and still do this. Rather than look at the situation and say, what's causing the problem between me and my sister or me and my brother? What's causing the problem that's hindering my growth? It's not the person. It's what's underlying in the problem. So, he knew that there would be a stretch to go beyond the area of comfort. Sometimes, in order to break through, we've got to go beyond our comfort. Yes, sir. Yes. Sometimes it might be a little pain involved to get rid of all the pain. How many of you ever had surgery and when you have the surgery to correct the problem, there was some pain involved in the surgery 
But if you didn't have the surgery, you'd be a lot sicker. So those are the things that, that had to happen was you have to look beyond the problem. So Jesus was telling him, says, okay, look beyond this child and know that I can help the situation. But all he saw was his child flailing and convulsing. And when Jesus spoke to that, then instantaneously it left him. And the other thing that made me look at it like a seizure was it says the child just was numb, went limp, just like he was dead. Somebody with a seizure, when they're coming out of it, they, they go limp. Because that thing was tearing them apart. And so you've got every muscle in your body tightening up and everything losing control. And all of a sudden, when it breaks free, free you just go limp. And then Jesus took the child. When he came to, the spirit was gone and did not return. Now, I don't know what that father's situation would be after, had, was after that. But I know in some of the situations I've had in my life, and you can probably know of some of the situations you've had in yours, that when you got to that point where you just went lip and gave up and says, God, I can't do anymore. My God. It was at that moment he took you by the hand and raised you up. You think about every situation that you've had you thought you couldn't make it through. Think about it right now. Think about it. Just any one situation. And if you think about that one, you'll think about some more. That when you got to the point where you just wondered, oh, Jesus picked you up out of that situation that you could not see beyond. Now, can you imagine this father after this thinking, I brought him to Jesus, but oh my God, this is for real. I wonder when he left there with that child who didn't have another one, if he saw somebody else's child in that situation, he didn't tell them, I know somebody who can fix this for you. I don't know how many other situations like that he had in his life. He probably thought after that, all right, I was challenged like this before, but I believe and I was stretched into the area of my doubt, my unbelief, and I was pulled out of it. And now I'm a little stronger. So what I'm facing now is child's play. What I'm facing, what I'm facing now, it might be hard, but when I think about what I went through, it looks like child's play to where I am now. But if I was stretched beyond that moment, I'll be stretched beyond this moment because the God I serve said he would never leave me nor forsake me. Me. When I think it's too dark, then I might be just before the dawn. When I think my way is unclear, maybe at that moment, that's when the light is going to come on down in the depths of my soul. And I can stand strong and say, my soul is anchored in the Lord. My God. As we grow in Christ, we're going to be stretched beyond our comfort zones. As we grow in Christ. We're going to be a stretch to a new limit. And yes, there might, be, there might be new situations that the devil will throw at you, but use where God has brought you from as your track record of where God can carry you through. Well, he brought me out of this I thought I wouldn't make. Now I'm facing that. Now he'll bring me out of that and he'll probably give me another level of knowledge and another level of growth. But you know, there's a song that says each victory will help you some other to win. My God. A new level of trust of God and his capabilities yep. will always, yep. always, always, always be the outcome because it is no secret what God can do. Oh my God. What he has done for others. Oh, glory be to God. He will surely 
do to you and do for you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. You're going to be stretched. You're going to be tried. And Jesus said to him, in this life, you're going to have trials and tribulations, but be of good care, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. You can cast your cares upon him because he careth for you. Don't let the world stress you out to the point where you can't see Jesus. Oh my God. Because if you get to that place, you're in a dangerous place. Is there one this morning? Is there one? Somebody needs to bring those situations of life. Somebody might have been saying, I would get saved, but I don't know if I'll fall tomorrow. But I'm going to ask you this question, and I want you to think about it. What baby learning to walk does not sometimes fall? But in the falling, it's not the falling that causes you to learn how to walk and become strong. It's when you stretch those muscles to the limit in the getting up. He's saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, yes, and I will give you rest. Is there one? <laughs>